Get ready for this new season when the ice melts and we start sailing away. That smells moldy. Wow. Right after returning to our sailboat, we get hit by an intense and stressful storm. We had sustained winds of 100 km an hour that peaked at 133 km an hour. The water still shifted to our side and rose of a good 6 foot. It all happened so quickly. We were scared of all the ice being pushed in, so we grabbed things off the boat and hoped it would survive. Shrink wraps, canvas and wires were being ripped. This is how we save money for our adventure down south. Of course, driving the plow and shoveling sidewalks. Beautiful sunny day, delicious muffin. We usually leave the marina by passing right here before hoisting our sails and then turning off the engine right after the break wall. Once we know we're well clear of the shipping lane. So nice. It is so neat to be on this island that we've been in in the summer that you can only access by boat because you're all surrounded by water and usually behind me is covered in cormorants and seagulls and uh, it's empty. It's so weird that it's just dead silent here. Normally at the break wall, it's, there's always just waves coming over the wall and it's always really noisy. But right now there's no sound at all other than the mill over there. It's just so peaceful. It's crazy, the power of water never ceases to amaze me. We're only here on a lake and the power of the wind over the lake can just change the way the water works so much. It raised during a windstorm we had not that long ago with top speeds of around 130 kilometer an hour winds. We had like a six foot raise approximately of the water level here. So you, and of course with that, all of the ice getting slammed up against the break wall. You can even see some ice behind me where it's actually big chunks the size of like a small car being brought over the uh, to the other side of the break wall and just these pieces here that were almost at the same height of the break wall and just kind of thrown up as if they're just holding in space because they froze in position after they got pushed up there it's crazy it's just so powerful The craziest thing about Canada is that right now we're in March on Lake Erie and the Great Lakes and it's completely frozen. There's a little bit of water in that frozen but like 90% of it is frozen and in only a month and a bit it's just gonna all thaw up and melt away and soon we'll be sailing.
we can call it Canadian winter. <laughs> so sometimes it's nice to actually just get away from the sailboat. We've been trying to do a little bit of work on it, even though it's really hard because it's winter in Canada and it's cold. It's been like minus 15 degrees Celsius. So working a little bit on it, but today it was just such a lovely, nice day that we decided to go for a walk and explore some of the areas that usually you have to get on the sailboat or the dinghy but now everything's frozen over so you can actually walk across such a cool feeling i'm loving this you guys know the drill hit that subscribe button subscribe that red button you know that red button down there hit it and if you like what you see let the ice melt away and the sailing season begin and hopefully this is going to be the last winter for a while. So we found one of our leaky spots that is leading to some unwanted water. Doing? Trying to take out the floor to the bottom of our settee here, I guess, or our kitchen, our, kitchen galley. our galley, because I wanted to get out this back wall, and it seems to be the easiest way without cutting some screws that are going through the floor. And it'll let us see what's under the floor. We noticed we might have a mouse, so it'd be nice to find where he's been hiding, and also to find out why we're getting so much moisture down here we think it's the cause of uh, the drain in the bottom of our fridge but it could also just be condensation building up because of a lack of insulation so we're gonna try to see I, I hadn't thought of this idea before so I'm, we're gonna try to see behind here rather than start insulating the inside um, so let's see what we can find so a quick little pro tip that I just kind of figured out. So I was trying to get the screw out and obviously it's just kind of spinning in place because the wood back here isn't the most solid. So I figured uh, I was gonna try something and all you do is you take a scraper or something, you slide it right up against the screw and you keep on screwing. And it comes out because it has something to bite onto. So that's a little pro tip for you. All right, let's see what's underneath this thing, hopefully. I think, yeah, there we go. Oh. oh, look at that. You find new things every day. We have a little access hole under here that I never knew about. Perfect. And that's, that's the pipe that feeds into our bilge from our fridge. So this is what I was trying to pull out and it was really stuck. So now I might be able to get a better idea and I might even be able to tear this up to find out why all this is rot getting rotten. I think there's um, spray foam on the other side of it. Yeah, definitely. Whew, that smells moldy. Wow, that was terribly insulated. No wonder our fridge is so inefficient. Look at this. Just that is just ridiculously bad insulation. Oh, no, too much light, Corey. Too much light. Ridiculously bad insulation. Like this is our this is our line coming in for our fridge. So I just shove some crappy stuff back here. No wonder. So we're done taking everything apart. I stopped Cory. Well, we decided to stop taking everything out. So we realized that there's pretty much no insulation on this side of the wall of our fridge, as well as the top section here. So I don't know how it was made. It's really looking terrible. No insulation. No wonder we were having so much trouble keeping it warm or cold. It was getting warm. <laughs> so right now, I think what we're going to be doing is re-insulating this side here with some rigid insulation and then for this side here we're gonna take the stove out and spray some spray foam from there from the top cut a little bit in the wood and then do a bit of extra insulation from the inside because this side is 
already a bit of spray foam. So anyways, hopefully that's gonna increase the insulation. How uh, hollow is it over there? Let's see if they can pick it up on the... It's pretty much just fiberglass. And we think there's insulation on this one. And where do we know insulation is? Not so for insulation sure. is for sure at the bottom. And up here there's nothing. And nothing. <laughs> boat mass. Na 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 na. Boat mass. Take all over the boat. Boat, boat. Mess, mess. Oh, the light's so different here. So this is the insulation of our fridge. It's pretty much this thick of fiberglass, that's it. And then there was insulation down here. <laughs> Pathetic. So not well made, Corey. there oh digging out all this cruddy insulation uh wouldn't be so i wouldn't really care that much if it wasn't for all these little really cruddy insulation pieces that are like a lid from an old or a lid from like those cheap coolers that you buy that are just made out of this cheap dotted styrofoam and i made this tool it seems to be working pretty well little handle I've been cutting and measuring a piece so that they can put the cardboard inside of the fridge and later on cut the foam without having too many cuts. Kind of fit, had to do a little bit of adjustments. This here is what creates the bottom of our fridge. It's pretty much moldy, rotten, wet insulation. Your movie there. No, yeah, well, maybe you should have filmed before. I can't get it in. Mess of the life that is. <laughs> okay, let's try to go in. I love and I hate long hair sometimes. So we're just tracing some of our templates for the bits that are going underneath the fridge. Uh, we just wanted to talk a little bit about what we're actually using to insulate our fridge. Um, some might not think it's the best thing. There's pros and cons to using this type of foam. It's called a polyiso or something, poly, polyiso or iso, you can find it online. It's iso in rigid insulation. Uh, normally this sort of stuff in one inch the pink stuff or the blue stuff is around five R value, R5 per inch. Uh, but this gives us around 6.5. Uh, I did just read recently that 
as it, the temperature goes down, you kind of lose some of that R value. So we're, it'll be interesting to find out how well it works. But another thing I really like about it is once you tape the seams with some of our uh, fancy foil tape here, you end up with more of a, almost like a moisture barrier and it works really well for, uh, it, the foam itself isn't supposed to be affected very much by moisture. So that's another reason why we chose it. So we're gonna try this out. Worst case, we'll tear it out if it's not working well for us and replace it with some other foam. What you doing? <laughs> Playing the worst game ever. So we're trying to put the screws back on the fridge, the cooling plate, but we can't quite find where the holes are in the fiberglass. So I'm using a hook, prying around, trying to find where it actually goes through and putting the screw in. We've got two out of four. Only well, took like a half hour. Okay, probably not quite a half hour, but close. I'm trying to fit the lid inside the fridge. It's a little tricky because there's a little holes going to the cooling plate. So right now I'm trying to seize it, size it and make sure it fits good and try to adhere it to the actual countertop. How's it going? I'm good, good. Just cutting little pieces of foam to fit under the fridge here. Really excited for the way things have turned out because we did a little test with just what we put inside, which is basically two inches. This is such an exciting moment. We actually filled up the fridge. So we've been doing some testing and it is so much more efficient than what it used to be. And that was only with what we've added inside. So that's not even including what we're adding on the outside. So we added pretty much like about two inches, an inch and three quarter all the way around in the inside. So that's added a lot more insulation. So let's fill her up. like my new lid. That's all two inch foam with some uh, foil tape. So I wrapped all the way around, made a little slot for the holes for the cooling plate. It was really tricky to try to put this on the top of our counter because I was trying to figure out where exactly it had to be stuck on. So Corey had the brilliant idea of just putting some hot glue on the foam when it was inside and then shoving the counter top on top and pulling it back out and it was good. Ta-da! So I'm gonna use the vacuum to blow the insulation from this end all the way into the back of the fridge where we can't access. Let's see how it goes. The way it looks right now. Bah! Fridge repair done. Just gotta put the wall back together. And the repair only cost us $40, cause that's how much the foam was and we didn't really use much of the other supplies.
The bottom of our wood is actually really rotten and falling to pieces. Uh, it's falling apart. So we figured we'll take some teak, cut off the bad section, put the teak back on and it should look good. Because we don't have any iron plywood and we don't want to go buy a huge sheet for just a little bit. So I finally removed all the stanchions, but now it's all out so we'll try to get them re-welded.